Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the future of networking, basically AI. Uh, this is arguably the best session of all of SICA. And we have five very interesting talks. Uh, two of them will be remote, and three will be in person. And with that, I will hand it over to the first speaker. The first speaker is Leslie Chow from Boston University. And she'll be talking about her paper, uh, Gannett, which is basically how to better improve and train uh, AI applications. And with that, I'll hand over to Leslie. Good morning, everyone. I'm Leslie from Boston University. And I'm glad to introduce our work, Janet. This is the work that we will focus on improve reinforcement learning in networking. And we collaborated with authors from UChicago and Microsoft Research. And let's get started. So reinforcement learning research has been popular in networking. For example, in the adaptive bitrate streaming, and in congestion control, and in traffic scheduling, and so on. Here is a quick example that how RL would work in the ABR system. So first, we have a simulated ABR environment. We want to train a neural network that observes the state, such as bandwidth, bitrate, buffer length, from the ABR environment and make an action as bitrate selection. And finally, the neural network would want to optimize the reward that's returned from the environment. And this is called the training stage. After it's trained, we want to deploy the neural network policy in the real video streaming service. So even though there are so many RL-based research in networking, they still suffer from some limits. The first limit here is RL have poor generalizability when you train it on the narrow distribution. So here we follow the traditional RL training, which we uniformly sample network environments from a given training range. And let's look at example again, that in the ABR system, when the testing range and the training range are same, you can see that the trained RL model performance is much better than MPC, which is an ABR rule-based policy. However, when the testing range and the training range are different, so here, let's say, the testing range is 10 times bigger than training range, the RL performance becomes much worse than the MPC baseline. So you might wonder that, why don't we just widen the range of training distribution to improve the generalizability? In other words, here we can just increase the training range 10 times bigger. Then here comes the second limit, that RL actually have poor conversion performance when the training distribution is large. So here the x-axis is the training distribution sizes, and the y-axis is the testing reward comparison. You can see that while the training distribution increases, that RL performance actually decreases a lot, and it becomes worse than the MPC baseline. And the reasons behind this are, first, the uniform sampling has very low efficiency. And also, RL may stuck in some hard-to-improve environments in this case. And combined with the first limit, what we really want is some better environment sampling, which better to be non-uniform, and sample it on the large training distribution. And this is not a networking-only problem. Actually, there is a possible solution called curriculum learning, which has been proved to be effective in other RL domains. So what is curriculum learning? Over time, we want to iteratively introduce rewarding environments for the current RL model. And here, when I say a rewarding environment, it means that it has high potential improvements for the RL training. Just to give you an intuitive example of that, here we want to learn an RL model on the maze game. So when we start to learning, we want to introduce more difficult maze environment to the RL training progress to let it have more opportunity to learn. So how does the curriculum learning really benefit the RL? We can see the training curve here. You can see after you gradually adding the maze difficult environment, that the RL training curve jumps to higher. So with introducing the new environments, this offers the RL model increasing opportunities to learn it. 
So now you may think that curriculum learning in networking is pretty easy. We just iteratively select rewarding environments, then we send this environment to the traditional RL training, and we train this iteratively. And finally, we got an RL policy. However, here the big challenge is, how do we really define this rewarding environments in network systems? So why is this a difficult problem? Here, you can see two kinds of different traces in the ABR environment. And they actually both seem rewarding, because after you add this kind of traces, the RL model can learn to be more adaptive to the bandwidth changes. So the question is, which one is more rewarding here? Unlike the maze example, that it's not obvious here. You cannot just tell it from the trace itself. So what we want is we want to find some indicator to help us define which one is more rewarding. And here, a simple indicator is gap to optimum. Gap to optimum is the difference between the optimal reward and the current RL reward. And this seems to be a reasonable indicator because the gap to optimum can tell you how bad RL is compared with the best possible results. But is that true? Let's look at the network trace set B as an example again. So on the trace B, you can see that after we add the trace into the RL training, that RL policy actually still performs bad. It's very far from the real bandwidth. And we think that this is because the trace set B is too hard to improve on it. And we believe it's because the bandwidth here actually changed too fast. So the gap to optimum indicator has a weakness. It's that even though it tells you how bad RL is compared with the optimal result, but it doesn't really tell you how difficult it is to bridge this gap. So can we find a better indicator? In Janet, we propose a new indicator called gap to baseline. And gap to baseline is the difference between the baseline policy reward and the current RL reward. And we can see the trace B as an example again. You can see that MPC baseline actually performs bad on this trace too. And here, why is the gap to baseline is good? It's because first, the baseline policy can estimate how difficult this environment is. And second, this gap can actually indicate the room for potential RL improvement. Therefore, we believe that gap to baseline is a rich indicator for identifying rewarding environments. So how does this gap to baseline really improve the RL in networking? So in this trace, on the trace set A, you can see that while baseline is performing very well, before you train it with Janet, which means gap to baseline, that RL policy is very bad. This means the gap to baseline value is pretty high. So this identifies that trace set A is a rewarding environment. So after you add the trace set A into the RL training, after it's learned, you can see RL policy actually at the beginning becomes as good as MPC. And in the end, it becomes even better, because in this case, it learns to use higher bitrate when the video ends. To verify this, we also did some correlation analysis. Here, you can see that compared with gap to optimum, gap to baseline has a much stronger correlation between the training improvement. And so you might wonder that, since we are plotting training improvement here, why don't we just use training improvement as our rewarding signal? The quick answer for that is it's impractical, that it has very high cost, and it doesn't scale very well. So Janet is the first to systematically introduce curriculum learning in networking applications. And here, to just use ABR as an example, all you need is a space of the ABR environments, which includes a lot of different parameters and their ranges. And then we want a rule-based policy, and here we can use MPC. After this, Janet will automatically create 
the curriculum for the RL learning. And we'll select the rewarding environments by Bayesian optimization. And you can do this iteratively until you have a more optimized RL policy. And Janet is a general framework. It does not only apply to ABR. So as long as it's a networking application with RL, Janet can be used on it. And here is our evaluation setup. So in the paper, we actually covered three different applications. But here in the talk, we will only focus, a, focus on the ABR as an illustration example. For traces, we use both synthetic traces and real-world traces. And for baselines, we compare Janet with traditional RL baselines with different training distribution range. We also compare them with some rule-based baselines, too. And we can get started. So in the whole evaluation part, we are trying to increase the difficulty of the testing environment to show that how generalizable Janet is. So first, we show the performance on the simulated environments, which means we train it on synthetic traces and also test it on the synthetic traces that's randomly drawn from this target distribution. And you can see that compared with the traditional RL baselines, Janet performs the best. And also, we want to uh, increase the testing difficulty a little bit, which we use an emulated environment. So here, we train it on synthetic traces, but test it on the emulated real-world recorded traces. And by the way, these real-world traces, their bandwidth range and fluctuation are actually within the training distribution of the synthetic range. And here, the testing traces are not seen during training. You can see compared with the traditional baseline. And also, here we have a special baseline. It's called RL real. And this real means that it even saw some real-world recorded traces in the training. And compared with them, Janet still have the highest testing reward in this environment. So, so far, we are looking at the reward metric. And reward is just a combination of a lot of different performance metrics. So does Janet really improve on individual performance metric too? And here we show you the results on the ABR emulated environment. You can see the x-axis here is the 90th percentile rebuffering ratio, and the y-axis is the bitrate quality. So compare with the rule-based baselines, and then compare with the traditional RL baselines, that Janet is actually at the frontier of the individual performance metrics too. So this proves that Janet does not only optimize for the reward metric, it also improves the individual performance metric a lot. And finally, we want to use the hardest environment, which is a wild open world test. And we leverage Microsoft OpenNet Lab for this experiment. So for the ABR application, we actually have five different paths in the paper. And here we only showed two of them. For the past one, it's a wired-to-wired -wired connection. You can see that Janet performs similarly good as the baselines. And this is reasonable, because the wired-to-wired -wired connection has a high average throughput between them. And the past two is a wired-to-Wi-Fi connection. You can see, compared with the baselines, Janet performs much better. So this means that the Janet trained in the simulated environments can also perform reasonably in an open world test bed. And Janet also have some limitations. The first thing is, Janet actually assumes the existence of a rule, reasonable rule-based baseline. And so for an application that does not have any reasonable rule-based policy, Janet does not handle that case very well currently. And we wish to leave this open as a future work. And also, for any RL-based approaches, it may, it's not guaranteed that it can be always better than the rule-based baselines in practice. For example, that for the RL-based solution in congestion control, it may not react as fast as the traditional TCP because with well, the network conditions, changed suddenly. 
And in conclusion, Janet is the first to systematically introduce curriculum learning to the networking applications. And second, that Janet leveraged this existing rule-based heuristics, try to find the rewarding network environments, and is guided by the gap to baseline indicator. And third, that Janet improves the performance of RL-based solutions in networking, as we shown in our evaluation. And this is our open source code, and feel free to try it. Thank you very much. Do we have time for a few questions? Oh, hi. Uh, hi. Really nice work. Can uh, you introduce yourself? Oh, sorry. Vyas Shaker from Carnegie Mellon, uh, one of the authors of MPC that you beat. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, I have a question. So uh, I'm curious, you call like uh, MPC as a rule-based baseline. So do you actually convert MPC's logic into like concrete rules? Because MPC is like a control algorithm. So I was not sure how you generated rules from MPC. Oh, thank you for the question. So here we did like convert MPC to uh, uh, like exact rule-based solutions, like depends on our ABR simulated environment that with your current buffer lens and your video size, and we change it to a real rule-based baseline to compare with. Nobody has questions, I'll ask one more. Yeah. Anyone else? Hello, I'm Ting Ting Yuan from Gothikman University, and uh, thank you for your talk. And my question is that uh, the uh, the performance quite rely on the baseline, right? So how you pick up the baselines? And the second one is uh, it has scalability problem, like s support multi-agent system. Yeah, this question. Okay, so um, if I understand it right, your first question is uh, we want to find a reasonable baseline, and how do we really find it? So here, actually, uh, so in the paper, we have more details about this. But uh, we found out that as long as it's a reasonable baseline, that we can just leverage it to use as our gap to baseline indicator. So for example, in the ABR system, there, apart from MPC, there is also a buffer-based baseline. And we actually compared with the Janet plus the buffer-based baseline in the paper, too. And we showed that it still works. And for the second question, I think you were asking that, uh, can Janet be used on multi-agent system? So the answer for that is, uh, I think it's definitely possible. And even though currently Janet is on the simulated environment, but like in the future, if you want to deploy it on multi-agent case or even on the online learning case, uh, it's always be can be possible. But you can also face some like new challenges that you need to address. Thank you. Uh, hi, Deep Mehdi from University of Missouri at Kansas City. Uh, one thing is not clear to me whether you are simulating for a single client or let's say 100 clients trying to use the ABR. Because I would suspect that if you have about 100 clients uh, accessing at the same time, things are going to average it out and you might not see the benefit. Oh, so. Yeah, if I get your, thank you, if I get your question that you're asking if for the evaluation part, did we use a single client or multiple clients? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. So currently, I would say that uh, at least for the ABR part, that we are using a single client uh, streaming as a evaluation. But as you can see, that we like did it in the simulation and in the emulation and in the real world test that after all this test, that Janet still have like uh, overall better performance. So as you said, that if the multi-clients like stream it at the same time, and that must be, or that could be a, like a bigger challenge. And uh, I'm sure that could be an interesting future work to see if Janet can really adapt to that case. Thank you. All right, let's thank our speaker once again. Thank you.